Welcome back to the most wonderful time of the year. For those of you that are new here, I'm Mr. Pat, and this is Mr. Pat's 31 Days of Halloween. For the past 11 years, I watch and review a horror movie or horror-adjacent movie every single day for the month of October. Since this is October 1st, I thought I'd do something big, and I went with the new release, something I've been seeing pop up all over the place, and I watched Malignant. I'm going to do something a little different with this review. I'm only going to use pictures that were used in the trailer because, oh boy, this movie gets wild and trust me, you do not want it spoiled. Before I begin, after watching this movie, here's something that's been sticking with me. At one point in a crime scene, a detective finds a picture of a little girl and it has the date 1990 written on the back. He then goes to one of his technicians and asks him to age the girl up. The tech then asks, how many years? And he says, 30. 1990 was 31 years ago. Yikes. That has nothing to do with the movie, just me always having difficulty coming to terms with how long ago that really was. Anyway, I digress. The movie opens with a doctor talking to a video camera and suddenly all hell breaks loose. There are lights flickering, inhuman screams, and a whole lot of murder. At this point, Malignant has my full attention. We fast forward to the present day and we meet a couple, a pregnant woman and her despicable husband. He's not long for this world, and it's so obvious that he might as well be wearing a red shirt. That night, after he meets his end, his wife is attacked by something, and in a truly heartbreaking scene, she loses her baby. But that's not the end of her problems, because soon she starts getting visions of more murders this man is doing, and a couple of detectives and her sister are dragged into this dangerous game as they piece together the murders and how everything connects together. That is all the plot I feel comfortable giving away, because if what I just described sounds weird, it goes absolutely full throttle once it does the big reveal. The twist is pretty great, and I had to pick my jaw up off the floor from the action sequence that follows. It's awesome. Everything I heard about this film talked about the strangest of this movie, and I can see it potentially being a turnoff. Personally, I loved it. The movie took a balls-to-the-wall approach, and the sheer insanity and unbelievability of the story absolutely works. They nail it. Like, there's a scene where they explain how the monster got its powers with just one sentence, and it's so ridiculous that you can't help but love it. There are some genuinely scary moments, and the monster is really cool. It has the right mix of grotesque, scary powers, and its manner of moving and communicating is really unnerving. I don't usually comment on the way movies are shot because it's not something I really notice. I don't look into the more technical stuff. I just, if the movie entertains me is what I'm looking for. With that said, this movie does a lot of neat tricks with a camera to show different perspectives. It had a scene where a protagonist, Madison, is running from the baddie and it's shot from above looking down. As she's dashing from room to room, it looks just like a mouse in a maze. Another mark in this movie's favor are the transition scenes where she's witnessing the murders. One in particular is really clever, and the way the world melts away is just a really cool effect. The leads are very good, I like their chemistry, and I was rooting for them to survive throughout the whole thing. I also have to admit, I really liked the ending as well. It was well done and satisfying while leaving the door open to potentially revisit these characters in the future. James Wan's Return to Horror isn't his scariest movie, but it's definitely his wildest ride. I highly recommend this movie. Nine and a half Dr. Chainsaws.